Merry Christmas from the Ken Woven family. I'm Rebecca Robeson. And I'm Shara. Shara is my daughter, and she's carrying my new grandson. <laughs> she's doing such a good job, too. Hey, guys, guess what? This year, I'm homeless at Christmas time. So I know, can you believe it? You've seen so many Christmases that I've had in my home in San Diego. Should well, I'm moving. Them? I am. I'm moving yeah. to Tulsa. <laughs> to live with, not live with my kids, but right now I am, and I'm in the most beautiful guest room. Thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you. You've made it a beautiful winter wonderland this year. Pretty fun. So I hope you guys are following along with all of our Christmas videos this year. Yesterday, I posted the reveal of this guest bedroom. Today, we're gonna focus on the fireplace mantles, two of them here in Shara's house. This one up here in the guest bedroom and then one downstairs as well. So you're gonna get two different looks. One is symmetrical, this one, and one is asymmetrical. So we wanna give you ideas of ways that you can decorate your fireplace in your home for the holidays. It's gonna be an awesome video, so if you guys have not yet, thumbs up this video, be sure you do that. And hit the subscribe button, because you know, we love new subscribers. We do, we love it when you join our tribe. There are so many ways that you can decorate a fireplace and a fireplace mantle. Now, if you have a fireplace in your home and you want to include it in your Christmas decorating, what I suggest you do is you sort of step back and you assess your situation. In this room, this fireplace is dead center on this wall with matching windows on either side. Already, it's a very symmetrical first impression. So I want to really play on that point. And while you're assessing, you're gonna wanna know, is this a workable fireplace or not? What's above it? What kind of room do I have? When you look at all of those things together, then you can make a plan of what you wanna do on your fireplace. The second tip is to decide how you exactly want to swag your garland. There are so many ways that you can do a fireplace mantle. And up here I decided, you know, this, was the winner where it had a crescendo in the center and I could make something really beautiful out of it. So if you take a garland and you put the two ends together, what that does is it helps you find the middle point. Once you have your middle point established, wrap a piece of ribbon in it. I am gonna put my glasses on for this because you never wanna hammer a nail without your glasses on. I identified the center point, tied it on with wire, and then swagged it over to the side, which leads me to my third tip. When you do that, you leave room up here on your mantle to place some of your ornaments, your decorations, and you can balance it out beautifully. I chose to put my trees on one side, and I chose to put my deer on the other. But you know what? I was laying in bed this morning, and I was thinking I could have done this differently. I could have done it like this, where I have trees like this, and then I have a reindeer over here with another tree and a candle. That particular arrangement allows it to look super balanced on either side. So do you see the point? Having this extra space up here gives you some options. Once your garland is on, we go to tip number four, and that is to decorate it. I used ribbons here that I tied in, not only into this decoration, but other decorations in the room, like my wreaths that are hanging from the window, which by the way, come back, because I'm gonna have a specific video on how to do that. Look at this ribbon. Now, I want you to know all of this is from Shinoda Design Center which is who we've partnered with this year and many of the years in the past. Most of what you see in my home away from home and in Shara's home, if you go to Shinoda's website, there actually is a Kenwoven page, which will show you all the things that are available that we've used in this home. <music> Using pine cones and then some of these beautiful champagne balls and the little vintage ornaments and balls that are baubles. Some of you from Great Britain call it baubles. <music> Number five, remember when I started this, I said, when you're assessing, 
Do you have a source for fire in your fireplace? It's important to know for a couple of reasons. If you're using fresh boughs and it's super close to the fireplace, those are going to, well, they could ignite, there's that, but also they're gonna dry out really fast. And I, I prefer to use artificial myself. But what if you don't have a fireplace that's workable? This one? right now, as far as we know, is not workable and we're not willing to try it out. So here's the deal. I use my Wolford candles. You've seen me use these everywhere. Now I'm actually using them on the floor, but the clear look of them and they are so safe because the fire is contained and completely encased in glass. And then on the artificial logs that were already in the fireplace, I added some green picks with the snow on them and a cute little owl. My last and final tip, I'll call it number six, is to have a focal point directly center above the fireplace. This time we used a vintage mirror. Topping it off with this rhinestone or bejeweled encrusted ornament, essentially, it has a hook on it that it can hang from a tree. I have the hook down behind the mirror and I'm hanging it as almost like it's a brooch or something. You've seen me before, remember when I wanted to make a belt out of it or earrings? And you know how I put it on? With some sticky tack. Get creative, you can do it. All right, so look how that pulls it together. You've got your crystal-y things here and your icy things here, and you have it there, and then it comes together at the top as a crescendo and creates a beautiful starting point for this absolutely magnificent fireplace mantle. So now I'm gonna take you downstairs and show you the living room fireplace and the mantle and why I chose to go asymmetrical down there. Start again with step number one, which is to assess your room and assess your situation. Like I said upstairs, when do you go asymmetrical and when do you go symmetrical? Well, in this room, the fireplace is again in the center of the room, but it has doors on one side and a window on the other. So I decided to go asymmetrical with this because of the depth of the mantle and the fact that there is a television above it. Of course, we never put anything in front of the television because that would be sacrilegious. You got that right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Can't do that. So I, in my mind, I was thinking this will be a straight garland across the top. Only five inches would not allow me to put anything on the mantle because it would be all garland. One swag across the middle, attached on both sides, both ends, and we're great. These particular garlands that we got this year from Shinoda are all battery powered, which is great, but they put off an LED, almost a blue colored light. And I wanted to affect that myself by adding the regular incandescent traditional lights a string of those in here, which adds more of the yellow, and then it tones down the coolness. And honestly, that is a tip that you guys are gonna want to use throughout your house. If you're like me, and you look at your stuff and you go, why does it look so cool? Why does it look so different? It's because the lights are not emitting like they have in the past, which has always been sort of that candlelight look. Again, with the TV there and the very shallow depth of a mantle, I decided rather than make this symmetrical with something here and something here, let's do asymmetrical. We'll do our bow, we'll do our decorations. We have the Santa, we have these birch uh, candles. Just so you know, these are battery operated so they, can, they won't start a fire on that television because that also would not go over very well with your boyfriend or your husband. <laughs> So this is what we call a mini moment. It's kind of the crescendo where things come together and then they just sort of lightly dissipate 
from there. They just get less and less and less as you go on. Now we actually had some cup hooks that were already installed, which was great. Then Shara didn't have to go, you're not gonna put a hole in my mantle, are you? <laughs> so yeah, those were already here. We were able to put these on. Now let me just tell you something. Here's a tip. Stockings, traditionally, when you put your stockings up on your mantle, do you look at it and go, that looks so sad, Zach? Well, it does because it has nothing in it. It's not gonna have anything in it until Christmas Eve when Santa comes. Meanwhile, I say, Fill it with bubble wrap, and that way you can get your the, the shape and the look that you want, and the stocking will hang much nicer and much more full and finished looking. As many years as I've been doing this, you'd think that I'd have it down and I would know everything that I'm doing. I do, but I discover something different and new every year. I always learn something. You know what I learned this year? I learned how to straighten out a garland. The tendency is for the garland to go like this. And when you put any balls on it here and decorations, even more so. I discovered a really, really, really great thing, which I've never done before. I just unfixed it. Can you see from there? Do you see how this is all flat and facing you? And as it comes down, it starts to tip toward you, tip down. I got this notion that, well, if it's coming this way, I, what can I do? Like put a wire here and here and sh my daughter kill me for putting holes in her, <laughs> in her beautiful mantle? No, but you know what this is? This is a heavy ball, a heavy ornament. You see how that now is sitting much more straight up and I have another ball, which is also heavy, and I'm gonna put it on this side. And what's cool is that you can't see it from the other side. You do not see that ball. But what it did was it created the weight that I needed to straighten that garland right up. I think everything turned out so beautifully. I think we did a great job this year. And so everything too. just looks so cozy and warm and Christmassy. And I can't wait for Christmas to finally be here. Me too. And for Sawyer to be here. For Sawyer to be here. I think he's gonna like the color palette this year. I think so too. It's gonna be a great Christmas and we want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Come back and watch more of our Christmas videos which will be uploaded tomorrow and you have a new Christmas video on your channel too. I do. Which is about how we design or decorated the entryway and the banister and the whole big grand entryway. It turns out beautiful so you have yes. to go check it out. And by the way, if you haven't seen the reveal of my guest bedroom upstairs, please go watch that. And the reveal of this house all downstairs here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, that's it. I, I promise I am done. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye. How are your cankles? <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> and I'm old. <laughs> Good thing one of us will change soon. <laughs>